Now at 4.30, it's WKYT This Morning. The search is over for a Lexington native and her husband in Brussels. Now the family says it is time for their healing to start. It was a tragic Easter Sunday in eastern Pakistan. Police say a suicide bomber targeted a Christian community celebrating the holiday. The latest on the attacks ahead. And in Laurel County, police say they found a mother and father passed out in a car with their child in the back seat. We'll hear what the father has to say about those charges ahead on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning to you. Welcome in. Hope you had a nice weekend and you're ready to go in this new week. Spring break for Fayette County Schools and for many uh, schools across our viewing area this morning. I'm Bill Brandt. And I'm Michelle Chamberlain. And you know, when I stepped outside this morning, I thought it was a bit chilly. It is. And uh, it looks like it will be that way. You know, spring is just hard to get. <laughs> you never know what to expect, <laughs> right? Any, right? <laughs> any one thing, Micah, you know, we just kind of uh, go through it and uh, yeah. change from day to day. Yeah, it does. And you know what? That's not going to stop. This whole week is just like that, up and down up and down. There's the front. Pushed on through. Now the rain's pretty much gone with. The thunderstorms at least. A little rain left over in southeastern Kentucky. I want to show you this that the satellite you put satellite in this. Look at the milky clouds. They are not moving all that much. Life Sky Camera it's a Nice shot this morning, but that cool air is really filtering on in. And what we're going to be seeing, temperatures continue to fall before the sun rises. And once the sun rises, well, the clouds will be overhead. So it's going to be hard pressed for these temperatures to jump that much. I'm going to show you a cool day in store and then watch these temperatures go back up. I'll have that coming up. Okay, see you in a bit. Thank you. The search is over for a Lexington native and her husband in Brussels. Her family says it's time for the healing to start. Family members confirm that Stephanie and Justin Schultz were among those killed in Tuesday's terror attacks in Belgium. The couple was last seen saying goodbye to Stephanie's mom at the Brussels airport. WKYT's Hillary Thornton talks to family about how they remember the two in our top story this morning. Betty Newsom says even though her niece Stephanie was thousands of miles away living with her husband in Brussels, she still spoke to her family back here in Lexington each day. Newsom says Justin and Stephanie loved the journey they were on together and were truly living out their dream, living and working in Belgium. They traveled every weekend. They were making the most of this short period of time that they were going to be there. I mean, they been running with the bulls and they had stayed in an ice hotel and they had been to the Vatican and I mean they had done all of those things they were living the dream that a lot of us wish we had done when we were that age living out their dreams in the town hit by terror attacks the couple last seen saying goodbye to Stephanie's mother at the airport who had been in Brussels visiting from Lexington. If they had been later to the airport, if they had gone earlier, my sister would have already been through security and Stephanie and Justin would have already been back to their car. But you can't do what ifs. After days of uncertainty, their worst fears confirmed the Lexington native and her husband killed in the attack. If not knowing for longer would have given them back to us, then let's go on not knowing. But if this was going to be the ultimate end, then let's, let's get this part done, let the healing start, the wonderful memories come out. While it is not the outcome they had hoped for, they are now focusing on remembering two very special people. She never had an, a, an opinion, a negative opinion of anyone, and she was a peacemaker. If, if family or friends were upset with each other, she was the one trying to make peace. And so she's the kind of person that you wish everyone was. His beautiful smile and outgoing spirit and the way he he hated no one. He was he would friend anyone in the world. Newsom says the travel loving couple had planned to do just that this weekend, scheduled to spend a few days exploring in Finland. At the live desk, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. President Barack Obama called the families and told them that Stephanie and Justin epitomized all that is good about America. 
More than 300 protesters clashed with riot police Sunday in central Brussels. The gathering started with mourners laying flowers at a temporary shrine made to honor the victims of Tuesday's attacks. Police say a group of men showed up with a banner denouncing ISIS. ISIS is the group claiming responsibility for the attacks. Now, some of the protesters lit firecrackers and riot police pushed the group away with the memorial with a water cannon. They arrested about 10 people. Two police officers were injured. Police in Belgium are continuing to carry out raids on suspected extremist nests. There were 13 raids Sunday morning in the capital and in two northern cities there. Police say four people were arrested. They are not saying whether the raids were linked to the investigation into the deadly attacks at the airport and the subway station. A tragic Easter Sunday in eastern Pakistan. Police say a suicide bomber targeted a Christian community celebrating the holiday. At least 65 people died, mostly children and women. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette has the latest on that attack. Sirens sounded shortly after a bomb exploded in Lahore, Pakistan, bringing chaos to the normally quiet area. Dozens were killed and hundreds injured. This man says, My cousin told me that 17 of our relatives are dead. A Pakistani faction of the Taliban has claimed responsibility, saying the bombing targeted Christians. This witness says, I carried 20 children to be taken to the hospital. I moved three bodies to a police car. The attack was in a park popular with families where there are children's rides. Lahore is near the Indian border, Pakistan's second largest city. There will be three days of mourning in the region. The White House called the attack appalling, and a spokesman for the U.S. National Security Council described it as a cowardly act in what has long been a scenic and placid park. Wendy Gillette for CBS News. The Taliban splinter group that took responsibility for the attacks warned more attacks will follow. We have learned the name of the alleged business that a former Kentucky personnel secretary used in a bribery scheme. The Courier Journal is reporting that Timothy Longmire used a Lexington consulting firm named MC Squared Consulting to obtain kickbacks and political contributions. Longmire faces a charge of bribery. In a complaint filed in U.S. District Court, Longmire is accused of using his authority to steer contracts to a business in exchange for kickbacks. Longmire most recently served as the deputy attorney. Attorney General, he resigned last week. A Laurel County mother and father are facing charges. They're accused of putting their child in danger. Deputies found the couple passed out in a car with a child in the back seat. They say the couple was under the influence of drugs. WKYT's Caitlin Sinner talks to the father about those charges. I've been sitting in the jail so crying for about just over an hour and a half now. A Laurel County mom and dad are behind bars. Their children in custody of other family members after police say they found them passed out in their car in a stranger's driveway while one of their sons slept in the back seat. Joshua Grigsby says he and wife Kayla drove to pick up a friend who had been drinking. So I told him, yeah, sure, I'll go ahead and come get you because when this is my second after I know I got. A cop pulled my door open and shined a light in my face, asking me what the hell I was doing there. So you don't remember falling asleep there? No. Joshua Grigsby admits to taking a number of drugs earlier in the day, but says when he was out driving, he didn't feel he was still under the influence. Both of them uh, very much under the influence, passed out in a, in a driveway where nobody even knew the vehicle. Grigsby says he had used meth, smoked marijuana, and taken Percocet. Both mom and dad face criminal abuse charges, among others. If we find you in this position, we're going to arrest you. We're going to place the most serious charges on you that we can. And we don't care if your child is taken away from you. We don't care if you ever get your child back because, uh, you know, this is not tolerable. Grigsby said he regrets his decision to do drugs and says there's no excuse for it. It's not worth it. It might, it might seem fun in time or two, but it's not worth it. In Laurel County, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. The pair is at the Laurel County Detention Center, and both have a $10,000 bond.
The Campbell County coroner has identified the man who died after his car went off a bridge and into the Ohio River. The coroner says David James Buma from Milford, Ohio, died from severe head trauma. Buma's car went off of the Combs Hill Bridge on Interstate 275 during a crash earlier this month. Crews pulled his body and car out of the river over the weekend. State transportation leaders have filed a petition to stop semis from driving on a busy Anderson County road. They say semis use Highway 151 as a shortcut. In the past year, police have dealt with five crashes involving semis on 151. Now, to keep trucks off of it, state leaders are asking the Federal Highway Association to remove Highway 151 from the National Truck Network. Neighbors say semis sometimes end up in their yards. Trucks can uh, will come off the road there and go up through the yards. This highway was never designed for uh, the big trucks that are coming down the road right now. The state says every day more than 800 commercial vehicles travel Highway 151. Well, WKYT this morning is just getting started, and it's great to have you with us as we get Monday off and rolling. The time right now is 440. Does long division make your head hurt? <laughs> I know it does mine. We'll take a look at why passing along your own math anxieties onto children can hurt their studies. That's still ahead on WKYT this morning. We're looking across the region, seeing those temperatures drop as that front pushes on through. The rain's long gone. Now we're going to be focusing in on some much cooler temperatures. We'll have that coming up. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Looking across the region, we're going to be holding on to those temperatures in the morning during in the 40s. Then we travel off into the afternoon, and we'll be seeing those 50s along with uh, some cloud cover. And the cloud cover is going to be the player as we go through time. There's the look as the big front's moving on out. Clouds really diving back in behind that. Now, we'll start to see the clouds fade late in the day, but for the most part during the morning hours, that's just going to be the look. Cloudy skies. As that rain pushes on out, you could get areas of drizzle here and there, but for the most part, we're going to stay dry today. Temperatures right there in the 40s this morning, and even some 50s back toward the east and southeast. But watch those temperatures drop as that front actually pushes on through. Now we're at 45 degrees in Fort Knox. This isn't a huge shot of cold air. It'll be much cooler as we travel through the day than this past weekend. This past weekend was actually really, really nice, 60s and 70s. And then we hit the afternoon. There we go, there we go around 50 degrees. That means some of us in the upper 40s, some of us in the lower 50s, but nonetheless, it will be much cooler than where we were just yesterday. Yesterday we actually hit the low to mid 70s. So we're about a 20 to 25 degree swing from that. We will get a few peaks later on this afternoon. And then we head off into the evening and nighttime hours and it turns pretty chilly. 37 degrees, that means some valley areas will have some frost tomorrow morning as you wake up going out and about. Today's talkers, obviously it's going to be the fill outside because this weekend, like I said, 60s and 70s, but now we're dropping that big time. And the ups and downs of spring will continue throughout the next several days. It does not change. I'm not seeing any pattern where it sticks with the really warm air or sticks with the really cold air. It's nothing like that. It's up and down. So here we go, right? 70s will be back in the forecast as we approach midweek. So today around 50, tomorrow they're in the mid 50s, and then it jumps up to around 70 degrees there on Wednesday, heading off into Thursday. And that just so happens to be when we get our next best uh, chance at rain. Check that out. So we're 50 today, mid 50s tomorrow, upper 60s to around 70 degrees on Wednesday. There is that night chance of rain as that rain moves on in. Few showers, few rumbles of thunder there on Thursday with temperatures right around 70 degrees. And then guess what happens? It drops right back down there as we head off towards your weekend, but at least your weekend looks mainly dry. I'm not seeing much of a chance of rain. So really the only rain chance, real rain chance, is really Wednesday night into all of Thursday. But other than that, guys, it's really not a bad looking forecast. It is much cooler. There are more days out there that's right around average and below average as opposed to being above at 69 there on Wednesday. That's going to be more than likely our best day in the forecast because we have that rain on Thursday. Mm -hmm. So even though you're at 70 degrees on Thursday, you still get that rain yeah. off in there. But oh, well, it's not that bad. Not a bad day, yeah, really, in there. Good. All right. Thank you, Mike. We appreciate Michael. it. Well, some people like words, some people like numbers better, and what parents like or dislike could be passed along to their children. Yeah, and so if you're not a fan of math in particular, don't project that onto your child. Here's why in today's Mom's Everyday Minute.
parents, if you break into a cold sweat thinking about doing long division or are unsure of your own math skills, you may be undermining your children's math achievement. According to the Association for Psychological Science, research indicates that kids of math anxious parents learned less math over the school year and were more likely to have anxiety about math themselves. This was only true when parents helped their children with their math homework. So when your child asks for help with fractions or algebra, instead of blurting out, I hate math or I'm not good at this, get involved. Try using math books, computers, board games, and internet apps that help parents interact with their kids around math in a positive way. For more tips to make mom's life easier, visit MomsEveryday.com. For these tips and more, just go to WKYT.com and click on Moms Every Day. And, of course, right there we have all the latest news and the weather for you as well as we continue with all the latest this morning. Our time right now is 448 on WKYT. Police in eastern Kentucky are still looking for the person responsible for setting a church on fire last summer. And even though the church may be gone, that didn't stop from celebrating Easter. That's still ahead. Hey, welcome back into WKYT this morning on your Monday morning. It is 4:51 right now, and in Louisville, police are investigating a deadly shooting. They say someone shot a man on East Oak Street yesterday afternoon. That man died at the hospital. Police say people living near the scene heard several gunshots. Police also found a red Dodge Charger near the scene behind a convenience store. That vehicle had several bullet holes. No suspects have been named at this time. St. Matthews police are investigating a deadly train wreck. Officers say the man was sitting on the railroad tracks in St. Matthews when a train hit him. The train's engineer was not able to stop in time. Police believe alcohol may have been a factor. They are calling it a death investigation. Police in North Dakota have arrested a Kentucky woman who's been on the run for two years. A tip led Williston police to 30 year old Yarlis Rios. Rios is wanted in Fayette County on charges of forgery and obtaining a real estate loan through deception. Police in Lexington say Rios embezzled thousands of dollars from the apartment complex where she worked and filed false tax returns. They transported her back to Kentucky and she is currently in the Fayette County Detention Center. Police in eastern Kentucky are still looking for the person responsible for setting a church on fire last summer. Peso Freewell Baptist Church in Pike County needs some major repairs. Church members spent their Easter morning in a small shelter on the church's property. They say the fire has really only brought them closer. Usually when something like this happens, a lot of time people begin tends to fall apart. But here seems like the people's been more mature. They they come together, pull together, and uh, everyone gets along just wonderful. The church's pastor says they are waiting for a permit to finish the construction. They hope to be back into the building in about two to three months. Months after a fire damaged part of their church, a Garrett County congregation is back at home. The Lancaster First Assembly of God has been holding services and a makeshift worship center since October. On Easter morning, senior pastor Wendell Johnson welcomed his congregation back to their old building. All it's right. good to see. And it's good to see those uh, stories of coming back. The time this morning is 4.53. And coming up, a look at some of the stories that we're working on for you this morning. And we'll also have another look at your morning forecast coming up. Good morning. Welcome back in. 4.56 now on WKYT This Morning. Now it's time to take a look at some of the stories we're working on this morning. The search is over for a Lexington native and her husband in Brussels. Her family says it is now time for the healing to begin. Family members confirm that Stephanie and Justin Schultz were among those killed in Tuesday's terror attacks in Belgium. We'll be hearing from family members after they got the news coming up at the top of the hour here on WKYT this morning. Uh, from all accounts, uh, just a, a, a loving couple, and uh, certainly you saw them there and those smiles, and it's just a, a sad turn of events that we learned over the weekend. It was sad. Um, yeah, I yeah. hated to hear that news this weekend. I want to check on the weather this morning. It's going to be up and down through the week. That's what Mike is telling us. Let's check in with him. Yeah, typical spring forecast, right? We get the clouds overhead this morning, and what you could get is some patchy drizzle throughout the morning hours. By the afternoon, it's mostly cloudy. And much cooler. We're in the 60s and 70s this weekend. Today we're going to be in the upper 40s, lower 50s. These temperatures will just continue to drop as this front pushes on through. So 50s over toward the east southeast. But guys, you'll drop to the 40s by the time it's all said and done. Then we're going to be talking about big warm up for the forecast. Yeah, I'm going to show you this up and down forecast coming to you in another two hours of WKYT News.